Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited bringing God's truth to you. Praise God. Listen, there is no disadvantage to a believer. That's what I'll share with you yesterday. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are God. <laughs> You are the king of the universe and you are our Lord. We submit to your workings today, Lord, and fulfill your truth in our hearts as we enjoy being led into every truth that there is in you. I pray for everyone watching and listening to me right now. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Doors of opportunities to walk in truth and in the light is open to them. And their hearts are being set on you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. We are the dealing with the heart. I'm telling you how to set your heart in tune with God. I told you something yesterday. The devil can never stop you. The only person that can stop you is you. Believe. It is not the demons from your village that are disturbing you. The demons in your village are only creating, what well, I call it acrobatics around you to turn your attention away. See? But if you will keep your heart perfect before the Lord and just seek to know what he wants from you, <laughs> you are going to walk through those demons. I mean, you get to a place they will set themselves as ladder for you to climb. I'm telling you the truth. Because you know what? Every demon obey the word of the Lord. Everyone. No demon can rebel. The moment the word of God comes, everything sets itself in place that the word of God be fulfilled. You know why you're there struggling and binding and casting the word of the Lord hasn't come yet. I'm telling you the truth. The word of the Lord hasn't come yet. And let me tell you this. The word of the Lord will not come to you and say, go and fight those demons. God, you know, you know someone will say, God gave me a powerful anointing to fight the demons in my village. It's not God that told you that. <laughs> Praise God. I, I can tell you who told you that. It's the devil that told you that. How can the devil tell me that? God have given me an anointing to fight the village. It's to distract you. God have never sent anyone to go fight demons. What did he say? He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out. Cast out, not fight. Cast out, not negotiate. Cast out. Cast out demons. Why did he use the word cast out? Because you were supposed to be going somewhere. And when a demon comes in front of you and says, I will not let you go, get out. Now, why are you casting out those demons? Because of where you're going. If you don't have where you're going, and then you're just busy enjoying having party with demons. You know what I mean, having party with demons. And then you, 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 know, you wake up every morning, you say, man, brother, last night, oh, the warfare we had last night. Ah, oh, God gave us the victory. Ah, I saw in my spirit seven demons were brought down. That's day one. Day two, hey, brother, hmm, this prayer we are praying is, is, is very important too. Last night, I saw 21 demons brought down. Okay? And, and then you keep going on and on. And you, you I, I believe God has given me a ministry to chase demons. Okay? Why are you chasing the demons? No, you know, we, we have to clear, clear the way for what? That's not a plan and vision from the Lord. It's never a plan and vision from the Lord. The Lord will tell you exactly where you are going. And as you set yourself to go, any demon that raises his head to oppose you from going in that direction or going to get to the destination, that when you meet them, what do you do? Not fight them. Get out of the way. Come on now. Get out. I'm going somewhere. And because you're going somewhere, I read this. It says, the world stands aside to let any man pass who knows where he's going. It's as simple as that. 
In this case, how do you know where you're going? Where God have commanded you to go, praise God. You know, that's why, personally, I love, you, oh, listen, it's easy to live an accident-free life. Very simple, very easy. It's easy to live a life of prosperity, of supply. It's easy. You want to travel? Very simple. Acknowledge the Lord in the trip. Now, you can set out like, oh, no, I want to travel to go and visit someone, so I want to go do something. And then you go before the Lord say, Lord, I'm thinking of traveling on so-so day. What, 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 what do you think? I have, I, have, I have bought my ticket already, Lord. I, I, I know I should have mentioned it first, but, but I just realized we've not talked about it. What would you have me do, Lord? No. And you're fellowshipping with the Lord concerning it. Now, the moment you bring the Lord into the matter, now, it's him that will tell you, don't go on Friday. Go on Saturday or go on Monday. Or he would, tell, or he would just tell you, you know what? When, when you get there, I want you to do so and so thing for me. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Now, the moment that word comes, there is no demon from any pit of hell that can come and stand on that journey. I'm telling you, you know, sometimes you hear testimony that someone was in a plane and then they say, oh, this plane, ah, God, yeah, do it. And then the person says, fear not, we will land safely. Why would he say that so casually? So casually. Why would he say that? Because God has told him what he should do when he gets to the next place. It's as simple as that. See, the word of the Ari, oh, I remember I was flying one day. <laughs> and, and, and I was, I think I was reading a book or something like that, yeah. And then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, look out the window. We're up there, 30, 30 about, about 30,000 feet. And then the Lord said, look out the window. So I looked out the window because I, I was sitting by the window. I looked out the window and then he said, what do you think is flying this plane right now? And my head began to go through all the physics and the aerodynamics and, and, and stuff. And, and you know, I was, I was still thinking. I hadn't spoken yet. And then I heard him say, see your head. You know, you know, you know how, see, see where your head is going to. And then I said, okay, Lord, I know you want to tell me something new. Just go ahead. And he said, if I tell you, as you're sitting in this plane right now, that it is angels that are carrying this plane, would you believe me? I said, Lord, you know, when he said it, my head just went poof. I said, yeah, 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 <laughs> praise God. Yes, I believe, praise God. Now, you know, I told you some facts, information, they come to your heart. <laughs> and let me tell you this, from that day, each time I fly, I'm relaxed, I'm at peace. Of course, I don't go anywhere until I hear the Lord command me to go. You understand what I'm saying? Or I get God's word concerning it. But each time I fly, I'm, at, I'm so at peace. Why? Because there are, there are angels holding this plane. They take it off from takeoff, and then they carry it through the skies, and then they land it. Say, but, but is it not the pilot that is controlling it? Stay there. <laughs> I'm telling you what the Lord has said to me, and I'm telling you what I believe. Praise God. So, so I don't know what you've heard. I'm telling you what I've heard. It's for me. Praise God. And, and, and now, but how do you cash on on this? You, you say, Lord, okay. Pastor George just said you told him angels are carrying the plane. Lord, tell me my own. <laughs> God. Yeah, that's how it works. Then it becomes a rema to you. <clears throat> I'm telling you the truth. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So he says, guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of your heart are the issues of life. What information have you been letting into your heart? Listen, Jesus, it was in this line, in this line of thinking, that Jesus taught the first things he taught when he began his teaching ministry. The Beatitudes. All those things he began to teach them. Go, go study them again. Now, this is, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. The first public teaching he was doing. Go study it again. 
you realize everything Jesus was saying there has to do with your heart. Why? Jesus was teaching them how to prepare, how to guard their hearts. Why would Jesus, if somebody slaps you on this side, turn the other side for him to slap you? Why would Jesus say that? So that there will be no hatred, re revenge, or bitterness in your heart. So someone slaps you and says, are you okay now? Do you still need to exercise your hand? I've got this other side of the... <laughs> now, now you know you know the truth. If you if you do it just like I have said, it will, it will just end up in laughter. Think about it. Someone just slaps you on this side. And you look at the person like, are you okay now? Are you satisfied? Or is your hand still... I have this other side. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what Jesus commanded us to do. Why? Not because he wants your face. You see, and when you do it in faith, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. You will hardly receive the second slap. But you see, there's something Jesus was teaching. He was teaching you how to guard your heart. See, so if you can receive the first slap, you didn't die you have the ability to receive the second one. Let me tell you this. People don't know, realize the ability they carry. They don't. Until the Lord reveals it to your heart. I'll tell you what the Lord shared with me one time, and I've used that example several. If you're walking on the road, for example, and, or, or let's put it this way, if you're sitting, in, sitting down in a meeting, a church meeting, and while you're sitting there, one of the ushers just comes in front of you and gives you a very hot slap and says, why are you sitting there? Now, most likely, your response will be to attack. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, that's what you would want to do. <clears throat> and you, you look and say, man, what boldness, what infantry, <laughs> you know. How dare you come slap me like this? I mean, you want to take him out and deal with him. And when someone asks you, why? Why did you, say, do you see how that guy slapped me? And you'd be like, man. You would want to fight. You want to see the end. You want to see him punished. You want to, you get what I'm saying. If you're civil enough, you want to get him arrested and dealt with and not go boxing with him. All right. Now you're sitting down in the same, on the same seat, in the same meeting, and the pastor whom you believe in is preaching. <clears throat> and then he comes around you and then he gives you the same dirty slap. And when he finishes slapping you, he says, Thus says the Holy Ghost. This, you see how you responded? You see how heavy that slap is? That is how what I'm bringing to you in terms of prosperity and blessing is going to hit you. Now what I go to, Amen! <laughs> I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. What about the pain of the slap? Now, when they ask you concerning the usher, say, why are you so? Say, man, this thing was hurtful. I mean, do you know? Do you know how painful it is? What about the pastor's own? Because he came forth with prophecy. You are now saying, "Amen, amen." You understand what I'm saying? You actually have the ability to receive the usher slap in terms of ability, the same way you receive the pastor's slap. Now, why do you respond differently? Your heart. Your heart tells you, who, who born this guy? Or when the pastor did, he say, whoa, wow. And then you're imagining, you're trying to imagine what's going to hit you like this. You're trying to imagine, are, are they going to slap me with a contract of billions? Are, you know, you, 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 you are imagining, what's going on? His words put something in your heart and you responded differently. You see, so where was the problem? Not the slap, your heart. Are you getting the point now? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Let's pray because our time is up. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your truth is penetrating deep in our hearts. 
and we receive the blessing of your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.